a knife? So there should be a knife in that pocket. In the pocket? Yeah. Is that the one you cut me with last yeah. night? Yeah. Earlier? Yeah. <laughs> it's fancy. It's really fancy. Okay. So if I had a seam in my cement board where my two pieces meet anywhere, vertical, horizontal, whatever, what you want to do is this is alkaline resistant tape. Okay? You'll go over that seam, okay? Place the tape over that. And this is nice because this is self sticky. And then, as I did all my screw holes, I want to do the same with this. Okay? Okay? Just like that. That's all I got to do. Okay? So if I had two pieces of cement board and I have that vertical seam or horizontal seam, I want to use the alkaline resistant tape and then patch over the top of that. Now, this doesn't look pretty, right? It is what it is, kind of. So then, snap roller. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to just stir that up real fast inside the bucket. Make sure it's good and mixed. All right. So either a half inch or three quarter inch snap roller. And you can do 18 inch, you can do 19 inch. But what I want to show you is you want to always remove all your labels and stickers. Okay. Then what you want to do is either start from the top or the bottom. Go up, get your roller kind of gliding a little bit, all right? And what I'm looking for is I'm looking between 15 and 22 mils thick, okay, of material, and each coat. So there's actually two coats of material on the wall. So I don't want to be like painting like you do the W and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you look over here on this side, can you see the lettering? Can yes. You, can you see the yes, cement board? It's somewhat still translucent. Through? It's still translucent. That means I don't have enough material on that first coat. You shouldn't be able to read What's it. What's translucent? Ah, fuck. <laughs> so, so can you achieve that in one coat? No. No, it takes, so what you have right now on the left is one coat and it'll dry. So we're like, how you can see some of this through here. Well, that's if I got it, if I didn't get it on thick enough. Thick enough. So, okay. here's what I'm doing. So I rolled up, I rolled down, I rolled up. Well, okay? Mm -hmm. So now when I go to blend these two together, my rollers, all right, there's a gauge over here. Somebody want to grab the gauge? It's a little metal thing. We're looking for that 15 to 22. So here's 14, here's 22. So I want to use this side of the gauge. I want to take it up and I want to scrape about an inch, okay? And I can see that I don't have enough material. It's hitting that 14 just barely, right? So I got to put more material up on the wall. So again, I want to do the same type of application. I just know I need more. Do you need to let it dry in between? In between coats, yes. Okay, so but if we had time right now and it wasn't 50 degrees out, you would have let that dry? No, 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 no. This is still to get my first coat. Oh. So you got to right go to the 15 millimeters for your first coat. Right. At least 15 wet mill thickness. Wet okay. mill. Okay. Is that going to shrink 15. when it dries? Yes. Okay. That's exactly what ends up happening. So I want to make sure that I get the right amount of material up on the wall. Okay. And again, I'm not painting. I'm actually applying a coating. Okay. Spreading. And I'm spreading it out. So again, over here I did not get enough because I can see the lettering and I know it's too thin. So I'm gonna come over here again and just apply the material. I'm gonna start from the bottom, more material up on there, come back down from the top, and then I'm gonna blend the two together. Okay? And now what you'll see if I do this right. A little bit. And I don't want it too thick. That's another thing that a lot of guys will probably try to do. Is they'll try to go, oh I'll put it on a little bit thicker. No, you really don't want to do that. You can actually get it to peel almost like rubber right uh, off the cement board. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna well, at least do it in two two applications. Right. Get that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now I came a little late to the party, so what if I could go ahead and go back. So it's 
We have cement board. Yep. And then maybe you use some screws to put them into yes. the studs. You'll countersink those a little bit yep. deeper. And then we're going to want to put all of our, uh, our tank. Yeah, over not, these, not, right? o not over the screw holes, but seams. Seam. So if I have a seam, okay. if it's just a screw okay. hole, I can just cement that little patch. Got it. Okay. Now, uh, and, and then, I, and then after ahead. tape, then we do, this is our air and water barrier right. over all that stuff. Right. Now I grabbed it up an inch. You can see I'm hitting between the 15 and 22. Great. Okay. So I'm getting enough material on there. All right. So again, that's key. And that would be my first coat, okay? And this barrier, well, this is acting as... It's an air and water barrier. It means water will not penetrate through it. And air will not move through it. Alrighty. So where you sell some of that uh, felt paper, or what we call jumbo tech stuff? Okay. You don't need that when you're using the area. And technically, that's a water-resistant barrier. It's a waterproof. Only have some No. Turn sir green on whatever. And whatever you put on. Okay. So if I was doing regular cement, okay, I could do regular cement. Alright. And regular cement would be, hey, I'm gonna apply this up on regular stairs. cement. Right? right? Stairs, stairs side front. stairs, whatever. You do want to make sure that your cement is clean and free of contaminants, no matter what. Okay, so when you have a poured concrete wall or a tilt up cast concrete wall construction, typically they'll use form release agents. On those form release agents, basically what ends up happening is they become a, a bond breaker. Okay, so either you need to get those off or you need to go to anchoring metal lath to the wall or cement board to the wall. Okay, then you can go the waterproofing membrane, it would go on the top of that, and we're the only waterproofing membrane you can actually adhere and we will warrant T our product adhering to our waterproofing membrane okay okay so we're gonna let that dry and use so the typical method says oh I'm gonna use the, the pooch out method right any of this excess mortar is gonna become part of my part of my uh, joint filler right okay or joining material in this case, we're not going to do that. We use our pointing mortar for that case. Okay. So, again, laying a piece of stone, not very really complicated. This is man made stone. Okay. What we want to do, again, take it, clean it off, take some material, and just scrape a light skim coat on there. Okay, so as we're doing that, again, we're making sure that the back is completely covered. Oops. Now, if I saw some on that piece right behind you, mm -hmm. you just put up, if I start seeing that slide down a little bit, does that mean I put too much material on? No, typically what it means is that the material in the bucket is not mixed to the right ratio. It's too wet. Right. Okay. Because it shouldn't slide at all. It shouldn't slide at all. Okay. Good clean brick. We're still going to clean them off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the notch trowel method. So I want to get material on my trowel. Up. So I get a nice even coating. Okay. Now on this air barrier, do you need to? Some people say, okay, after you put the air barrier on there, you want to skim coat that, or just go ahead with that. No, you could you could do just do the way you are. Yeah. Notch trawl it on there and just yep. let's go. Yep. Okay, cool. So here I'm just notch trawling it on there, right? Yep. Not doing anything real fancy. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get material up there. And then what I want to do is take my notch trawl and just notch it out. I don't want to dig into my air and water barrier. I want to keep material there. Okay. If I don't have enough material, I'll come back and I can apply more material to that corner edge. 
you got to only work as far as you can. And yep. again, we want to just make sure the bricks are clean. That was what size notch? Half? That's three eighths. Three eighths, okay. So then again, I just want to make sure, obviously this has grooves in it. Yeah. So I want to make sure those grooves are filled in there. So I'm just putting a light skim coat over the top. Alright. Hey Bill, uh, yeah. you always notch in uh, left to right? No, it doesn't matter. Left doesn't right, matter. up or down, doesn't matter. Don't work too much in it. So I, I want to, yeah, you notice it doesn't want to work a giant area because then the material could set up on the fencer. So again, I'm going to push in, up, and bring it down back into place. Okay. I'm going to take that where my 3 8 inch joint is. I'm going to push my brick in. Again, I can move it this way and come back down. Oh, so if you keep it in the bucket and you keep it covered during the summer months up on the wall as the guys are working, you'll probably have 45 to an hour working time of the material actually out of the bucket. Again, if it starts to stiffen up to a certain point, you won't be able to use that material. So it just depends on the humidity level, the heatness or hotness for the day. And then basically you can send the bucket back down, have the guy remix it. Yeah, it looks creamy. If it doesn't look creamy at all, then you know your material is gone. A dry stack look. Bring that back over. Get a little creamy. Yeah. So, Bill, is the reason water ratio? That's it. I'm not going back. I'm not adding any more water to it. But again, I'm gonna hold my place. Slide my stone and slide it back into place. Um, in terms of workability, like if I get you know ten pieces up here.